what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com and today we're doing a deep dive into Fine Fine's SC1 audio interface. As you saw in the intro, I've been testing it out quite a bit with my guitar and also my recording setup. And in this video, we'll go over the specs and I'll also show you how to hook it up to a laptop so that you can essentially have your own recording studio on the go. So if you're a musician, a podcaster, or really any type of digital creator who wants to up their recording setup and audio quality, then stick around because Fine Finds SC1 just may be the audio interface for you. And real quick, before we get started, if you get any value out of this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. It helps me bring you guys more resources and you could stay up to date with all the web and tech trends happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, let's take a closer look at Fine Fine's SC1 audio interface and unbox it. So I wanna thank Fine Fine for sending me the Amplitank SC1 audio interface. I hope I'm saying that right. But as a music nerd, I was definitely excited to test it out and stoked that I found a way to sneak my love for music into one of my video reviews. So to say I was excited would be an understatement, but I digress. So out of the box, it's pretty straightforward. First, we have the user manual and there's a lot of helpful info in here. So I highly recommend checking it out as you're setting up your device. Next is the cable, and this is a USB-C to USB-A cable, but as you'll see in a few moments, it converts to a USB-C to USB-C cable, which is ideal for me since I'm using a MacBook Pro for my recording setup. Then finally, we have the Amplitank SC1 audio interface, and we'll go over the specs in just a sec, but I have to say that out of the box, it's super compact and actually really lightweight. This is definitely a plus if you're recording on the go and traveling. It won't take up a lot of space or weigh you down. So that's everything that comes in the box. Next, let's take a closer look at the specs and quickly go over this powerful little audio interface. Okay, so taking a look at the front of the device, starting on the left-hand side, we have the microphone input, which is a combo input, allowing both XLR and quarter-inch cables. It also has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This range is considered the standard for high-fidelity audio as it encompasses the full scope of human hearing. So the frequency response will pick up deep bass, mid-range and high frequency sounds with equal effectiveness, making it perfect for various audio recording scenarios. Then the dynamic range is 80 decibels and is generally considered sufficient for a wide range of recording purposes. So this dynamic range can handle a quiet voice or the higher volume of enthusiastic speech or singing. Next, it has a signal to noise ratio greater than 75 decibels. This will give you recordings with minimal background noise relative to the main audio signal. And this results in a clean and high quality sound. And finally, the gain range is greater than 45 decibels. So it's very capable of accommodating various recording means from quiet to loud sources, ensuring that the microphone's output is at a usable level for various recording scenarios. Simply put, this microphone input can handle a wide range of microphones, giving you a professional sound. All right, moving on to the right of the mic input, we have the 48 volt phantom power button, and this lets you transmit phantom power to a condenser microphone if needed, and when turned on, the button lights up with a green LED light. Next to that is the instrument and microphone switch, and we'll definitely use this in a bit, but this lets you switch between instrument mode and recording mode, depending on if you're using a mic or instrument to record through the interface. Next, we have the instrument input, which is for a quarter inch cable, and it lets you record audio from instruments such as a guitar or really any instrument that can be plugged in by a quarter inch cable. Next to that is the headphone interface, and this is where you'll plug in your headphones to monitor your recording. And taking a closer look at the output specs, first, the power of 30 milliwatts slash 32 ohms means you can expect the headphones to reach a comfortable listening volume without requiring a separate headphone amplifier. Next, the output also has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Again, that's pretty typical and will give you a clean sound whether it's bass, mid-range, or high frequency sounds. Then the dynamic range for the headphone output is 85 decibels, which is a safe and adequate volume for typical listening experiences. And the signal to noise ratio is greater than 80 decibels, so this should deliver audio that is significantly clear and more defined. And finally, the impedance ranges from 32 to 600 ohms. So this range indicates that the headphone output can suit different listening needs and equipment capabilities. 
All right, next to the headphone interface is the headphone volume knob. It's kind of blurry in this picture. I apologize about that, but this knob allows you to turn the headphone output volume up or down. And then next to the volume knob is the direct monitor button and pressing this allows you to monitor the sound mixed with the computer and mic or only from the computer. All right, so that's everything on the front of the interface. Next, let's take a look at the top and check out the volume knobs. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. There are three knobs, all control different aspects of your recording output, but all are adjusted by turning left to decrease gain level and turning right to increase gain level. Additionally, all three have light indicators to help you monitor your levels as you record. Green is good, orange and red are typically bad. And then starting on the left, we have the mic line gain knob, and this lets you control the gain level of your mic that's plugged into the interface. Next to that is the instrument gain knob, and this lets you control the gain level of the instrument that's plugged into the interface. And then finally, we have the outputs level knob, and this controls the gain level of the speakers connected to the outputs on the back of the interface. And speaking of that, let's move over to the back of the interface. And here, this consists of the power supply, which is a type C interface. This is where you'll plug in the cable that came with the interface and it supplies power to the interface and transmits data. To the left of that are the outputs for the speakers if you choose to hook any up and they connect with quarter inch cables. The left and right speakers should correspond to the left and right outputs clearly marked here next to each one. Then finally, there's a security lock that allows you to secure and lock the SC1 if needed. All right, so that's an overview of the Amplitank audio interface. I just love the simplicity of it all because it makes setting everything up super simple. And speaking of that, let's quickly go over my personal setup so that you could see firsthand how easy it is to create your own portable recording studio. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm using my MacBook Pro with GarageBand as my DAW, and this is how I'll capture and edit my audio coming from the interface. Next, I'll be using my FineFine K669D dynamic microphone with the windscreen to actually record the audio. Then there's obviously the Amplitank SC1 audio interface with the power supply cable that comes with it, as well as my XLR mic cable. This is what I'll use to connect the mic to the interface. And then there's my Audio-Technica headphones. This is what I'll use to monitor my audio as I'm recording. Then for a little added flair, I'm also going to hook up my ESP LTD solid body electric guitar with a mahogany body and flame maple top. I love this guitar. And not shown here is the quarter inch cable that I'll use to plug into the audio interface, but that's the gear that I'm going to be using in this video. So next, let's go over how to set everything up and connect to a computer so that you can begin recording studio quality audio. Okay, first thing on the back of the interface, you'll want to plug the USB-C side of the power supply cable that came with the unit into the USB-C port like so. Now I'm not plugging any speakers in for this video, but if you have any, you'd plug them in here on the back of the interface as well in the right and left marked outputs. Next, it's time to connect the audio interface to my laptop. And again, I'm using a MacBook Pro, so it doesn't have any USB-A ports. However, the cable that came with the interface converts to a USB-C cable. If you give the USB-A side a little tug, it can be removed to convert into a USB-C cable. Then all you'll do is plug that into the laptop, just like so. Then once connected, the interface will turn on and you'll be able to confirm that when the light power indicator turns green. Okay, now that we're connected, it's time to start plugging in my audio equipment, starting with my mic. And again, it uses an XLR cable, so after connecting that to the mic, I'll plug the male side of the XLR cable into the mic line 1 on the front of the interface. Then if you're using a condenser mic, don't forget to turn on the phantom power by pressing this button. It'll light up green when turned on, indicating that you're now receiving phantom power to the mic. Next, I'm going to plug in my headphones, and I'm using a quarter inch cable adapter here since these headphones came with a 3.5 millimeter jack, and then all you'll do is plug in the headphone interface marked with the headphones icon. Then once plugged in, don't forget to press the direct monitor button. This will allow you to hear what you're recording through the headphones. And there's also a volume knob next to that button where you can adjust the volume and the headphones as well. Moving on to the guitar, and again, I'm using my electric guitar, so I'll first plug the quarter inch cable into the instrument. Then back at the interface, I'll take the other side of that quarter inch cable and plug it into the instrument two line on the interface like so. 
Then depending on what you're recording, you'll need to switch between lines. So don't forget to click the instrument microphone switch to switch between instrument mode and recording mode. Okay, now that everything is connected over at my MacBook Pro, I got this alert asking me if I wanted to allow the connection to the SC1. I clicked allow, and then I did have to go into my settings to make sure that all of my inputs and outputs were both set to the SC1. Now I should point out that if you're using a PC or if these settings don't work for you, I highly recommend looking at the user manual. They have some great step-by-step -step instructions for various software, PC, and Mac OS setups. And speaking of that, I'm using GarageBand to record my audio. So as you can see, I've created two tracks here in GarageBand, one for my guitar and one for my vocal audio. And then on the guitar track, I've added some effects that give it a pretty cool bluesy sound. <laughs> And that, my friends, wraps up our deep dive into the Fine Fine SC1 audio interface. And I gotta say, after using it, I'm really impressed. The latency-free monitoring, the plug-and-play setup, and the sheer simplicity of it all make it a bargain for its price range, which is only about $55. And to be honest, they could probably charge a lot more if they wanted to, but for only $55, you're getting a really good deal. So there you have it. The Fine Fine SC1 audio interface gets a solid thumbs up from me. And feel free to check out the links below for more details and where you can grab one for yourself. And hey, while you're at it, why not hit the like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel for more web and tech reviews just like this one. But either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. So that's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're thinking about starting a blog, you gotta check out my step-by-step -step tutorials. They'll show you everything you need to know in order to build, grow, and monetize a professional WordPress blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.